What's up? Welcome to Doe Probe. I'm Ben and this is Rob and oh, yeah. we are starting a podcast essentially to talk about things we want to, nothing about what you want to listen to. So fuck you for that. Um, no, we'll start again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, today we're going to be talking about AI um, and machine learning and sort of the potential risks and solutions and possible futures that come out of that. If you want to hit subscribe, that'd be really appreciated. Leave some comments down below for any topics you want to see in the future. And I'll leave a link to the merch stand as well if you want to grab yourself a t-shirt or a jumper. All right, so let's get into it. How you doing, Bob? All right? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, man. Uh, I thought we'd start out. Um, by discussing Google's DeepMind um, project, because I think that's probably a good place to dive in for this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Do you AlphaGo know much about AlphaGo? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, obviously, the game of Go. Um, it, it really it started, didn't it, with sort of 1996 with IBM's Deep Blue when they got someone to beat Gary Kasparov, the world chess, chess champion. Yeah, which is just yeah. like at the time was insane and thought that, oh, this is going to be the big stepping off point. It's going to be a major for, breakthrough yeah. for, for artificial intelligence, yeah. Yeah, but I think for machine learning, the real breakthrough was in 2016 with Google and their DeepMind project. How much do you know about that? Um, well, that's the thing. It's like, it's like a fundamental difference that I find between the two is, you know, when you look at Deep Blue, it's basically being program to assess um the situation and kind of weigh up the 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 win rates on various possible outcomes within a set of parameters that it's been programmed to do by people who who play chess and obviously the nature of the game of chess is complicated but then like i, I don't know how much like everyone knows about the game of go but that you know, the, the possible board combinations that you have on that are like a, a Google, like what you, yeah. you can have more possible board combinations on that than there are atoms in the known universe. And that's an insane it's fact funny. in itself. It's funny because they say that Go, uh, Go is a simpler game, um, but Less because rules. of how abstract it is, it can, uh -huh. it can be really like complicated. So there's like someone who's like a good level Go player is like on a level but then as you know world champions and people who are just levels and levels of mastery up on it it's just picking ridiculous. so much out of this game it's kind of like the thing there was someone that i can't remember his name who said about how you know you can learn the game go like that instantly really yeah. easy but it's like right i know what to do but what should i do like <laughs> where do i but the amount of complexity that actually comes from just the game itself, even without the rules, just because of how many outcomes there can possibly be, is obviously going to be like a massive hurdle for anybody designing a machine because you can't you can't program a machine. You can't pre-program a machine to be able to handle every single situation because no one's going to have the trillion years it's going to take to write in every piece of code um yeah in order to account for every situation so that's where the machine learning comes into it and that is the fundamental difference between deep blue and deep mind and that's what i think is exciting and, and scary i saw something about um i saw someone say about if you wanted to um learn if you wanted to have like from a a strategic place in the game of go if you wanted to train a computer to know every possible outcome from that sort of place on the board, then you, the amount of energy you'd need for a, the computer to process that information would just be like galaxies worth of energy yeah. to like yeah. actually Dyson have a computer to take, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. the, the funny thing is, is I think with um, Deep Mind or at least the version that played Lee So Dull and beat him in that sort of five game series, um, mm -hmm that only worked to about a thousand possible moves 
away. So it would have a thousand iterations and it would go, we could go this, 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 or this Into a thousand future, times. Like put, and yeah. then would pick would pick from that what the generation the... it went to go for. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Which is so interesting. And which is why I find machine learning so interesting. And a lot of people are doing it now. And obviously the machine learning thing is inside sort of everything. It's what they're, you know, they're doing with the cars that are driverless and um, yeah. you know, all these sort of, you know, there's a lot of it's Amazon because stuff. Because it's how to adapt, because well. it needs to be adapting to a dynamic scenario, which is, yeah. which is the, is like kind of the main hurdle really. And like, if you can design something which can adapt, then you've basically essentially got, albeit a basic form of almost human intuition. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. It, it is mad, isn't it? And I think that's the that's what's so complicated about AI is if you when you actually look at the human brain and how many connections there are between mm-hmm. neurons, like to replicate that with a computer, you think, oh, well, computing, you could you could have as many as you want. I mean, you could build a warehouse just just full of you know software and hardware to. Yeah, to run that, but of to, synapses and things. Yeah, but you've you've actually got to build them, you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so so you, yeah. you have to map it out, and a lot of people now are mapping out sort of human brains and the sort of That's links between them and making the thing the the yeah. barriers to you know if you go back when you had top top scientists working on how to program a computer to solve that riddle um there was a video it was like the the three missionaries and the three cannibals trying to cross a river in one boat and if the cannibals ever outnumber the missionaries then they would get eaten so you have to get all three across to the other side without anyone getting eaten and it's like these are top scientists and and researchers and psychologists that are that are putting all their efforts into designing a computer that can solve that, which obviously it does. And um, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is nowadays it's kind of like anybody almost that knows how to code can potentially write an algorithm which allows something to learn. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? But the I've not seen that problem before with the yeah. with the going the across cannibals. the water. Yeah, cannibals. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I've seen other versions of it where they, back in the day, when they were trying to um, like get a machine to understand human writing, because if you take handwriting, the way that people write, like just a nine, mm-hmm. like a human looks at that nine and has all the historic, like the historical, all the, the knowledge, kind data, of and all the yeah, it's already pre-learned. So you know, well, that's a nine, but that's also a nine, and they look completely different because it's someone different's written exactly. it. Exactly. But for yeah. a machine. You can't just say, well, it's got a circle and a line on it because they no. go, well, which pixel is a circle? Exact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's odd, isn't it? But it's <laughs> it's all because obviously the human brain and computers are both binary. You know, we have on yeah. or off, you know, mm-hmm. and so does a computer. So yeah, what you just false. it's all about making enough complexity for mm-hmm. the computer Cascades to Cascades and things to yeah. try and to eventually come up with the to come up with the right the answers answer. to things. Yeah. And with machine learning, obviously, they have generations. So you go, you feed it a ton of data and say, this is a nine, this is a nine, this is a nine, this is a nine, this is a seven, this is a six. And it mm-hmm. um, just takes in all the data. And then you start trying to like test it and you say, okay, now show us, you know, this and that. Yeah. But I, and I saw something. when it's wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Go on. No, no, sorry, man. I, I saw a really interesting one with. Um, if you if you're trying to teach a machine to distinguish between beer and wine, so mm-hmm. and they they said you could do it with just two um, two pieces of equipment, a spectrometer which measures measures color, and mm-hmm. then a machine that measures alcohol content, um, so like the percentage of alcohol in there, and you could feed in, you know, you go to a shop, you buy all the wine and all the beer you can get, and you go, this is beer, this is its color, this is its alcohol percentage, and you do that all the way through with um, the wines and the beers. And then obviously the machine has has like two two pronged attack to, to guess what the uh, the content of the liquid you're, you're showing it is. Now, mm-hmm. if you show it Coca-Cola, it's gonna 
be like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> the, you know, with those two things, it's going to know the difference between them. It will them. know between so, the two, yeah. Yeah. And obviously that's hard in itself. But then mm. having a machine that is not just focused on finding the difference between wine and beer, you yeah. know, it then is focused on everything. But it on also everything. needs to know the and difference between wine and beer. Yeah. yeah. Whereas that's when you're on your way to general intelligence. Yeah, and ge- and general intelligence is AI, which is much harder. Much harder. <laughs> because the then you like, need it needs mind. to be yeah it, yeah exactly it's, it it's needs just to focused on one thing kind of, exactly yeah. like deep mind in itself is a proof of concept which you know means that theoretically like that should be possible. Um, but in, in itself, it's still a very, I mean, it, it's not a, it's not a narrow AI, like, like Siri or something, but it's mm. still, I feel I, cause it, because it adapts and because it learns and especially it was in how it learns with itself, you know, it's like, yeah. it's like the fact that it play, it, it understands the, the basic rules of the game by, you know, analyzing amateur players and then runs those games over and over and over against itself to kind of better itself and, and learn mm. in, you know, in a very short space of time. And that to me is kind of like, like where, where does that kind of end? Because the difference between um, like older artificial intelligence and deep mind, so deep blue and deep mind is okay. You've, you've programmed in um, what deep blue should do in that scenario and then you've programmed into deep mind how it should learn what to do next out of that scenario what happens when you have an intelligence which programs the learning algorithms into the next intelligence and then i feel like you might get almost like a snowball effect where it will be almost completely self-sufficient and it won't need well, to be pre-programmed yeah. because it won't, yeah, the, the funny thing with that is once it's programming itself to make itself smarter, like at the point that the machine is better at making itself more intelligent than we are, um, that's when all the risks come in. And that's when everyone exactly. jumps on the, the regulation yeah, train and exactly. goes, wait a minute, what's going on here? Because it, yeah, it, could, it, it could set itself up to have more and more data capabilities so it depends on what type of ai you're building you can build a limited ai or you could build a non-limited one a limited one would be sort of set apart from the main grid and you say this is how much energy it can consume yeah and and this is how much this is the point at which it cannot do any more um yeah but that you you know if you if you let it loose and you say right go on and crack on um, and yeah. that's when everyone gets fray about but just needing thing, regulations. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But then how do you regulate that when, when you know, like Gary in his mum's basement, who's just got like his shit hot new computer, can, 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 program, can program an AI? And obviously, like, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> we're not yet there. No, but, but the no. regulation regulation takes years. And an AI can yeah. learn in minutes to do yeah. anything. And it Instantly, can change exactly. its entire programming before you exactly. could even think about it. I mean, they, exactly. like I saw, I, d- I don't know how accurate it is, but I saw that um, if you had an, a, like a fully functioning general intelligence AI, it could do the work of like a thousand humans every yeah. like second, you know? So yeah. it it would literally be like constantly further ahead. It would, you know, it would be so far off a jumping off point for our level of comprehension that we'd be mm-hmm. sort Left of stuck behind. there looking at it. Yeah, going, wait, <laughs> what's going on here? Built this thing and off it goes. But, yeah. but it's funny, isn't it? Because it, it seems to be everyone's racing towards wanting that. And I, I don't know mm-hmm. if that stems from... I don't know if it stems from us and our you know human beings as a whole saying we don't know what we're doing. Let's give something else the reins and let yeah. that rule the roost for a bit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it feels almost that way, that people are so unwilling to say, this is what we're going to do politically or this is what we're going to do economically, 
that you say, well, yeah. we just will linger until we've developed an AI that's capable to run us <laughs> efficiently <laughs> and, yeah. you know, so without wrecking happening. the planet. <laughs> yeah, that's, that yeah. seems to be what it is, though. But well, Elon Musk I don't thinks know. that there's actually going to have to be an allowance given to people who are alive just, just so that they can survive because there will be, in the, in the age of AI, there will be so little for people to do that you will need to be funded. Like it won't be based yeah. on how much you put into the economy. It's just simply you, you will be paid an allowance just so that you, you can live in that. Well, that's universal. Yeah. That's universal basic income, isn't it? To be fair, a lot yeah. of people are calling for that anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously that's a little bit of a socialist kind of um, idea. And it goes along with a lot of things where people say, Oh, well, if we got free healthcare and free education, why not give the poorest people? I mean, there is an argument against UBI, um, which is completely off topic for this, but we'll probably discuss that in a later video and, and I'll run down <laughs> sort of my understanding. You of, can throw of UBI. all your right wing views out then. <laughs> <laughs> well, Come I on. know that I, I know that you're sat there going, oh, give us all the universal basic income. Um, I think there's <laughs> I personally think there's there's problems deeper in society that throwing money at won't just fix. Um, some people I agree. that I completely are agree. at the bottom that really need help need help, not yeah. money. If you give yeah. uh, you know a raging alcoholic a thousand pounds a month, they're going to spend that all on alcohol and kill themselves. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whereas if you give them what they actually need, you know, to be fulfilled, if you give them some meaning, some purpose, mm -hmm. that is a more useful tool give them education, give them um, a place to live, food. Give them an AI. Give them, <laughs> give them their own personal AI. Exactly. So they're a super bot. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think, I, there is problems that I don't think chucking money at solves, um, no. which is maybe, uh, but that's what an AI, an AI would be better coping with. Be better at coping of, with those kinds yeah, of Yeah, you know, those, those problems in society. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Precisely, exactly. precisely. It could, you know, it, it could break down. Okay, well, we need this many resources for this much population. Um, mm -hmm. Let's distribute them all in a way that works. I mean, I don't know, but you look at capitalism in the way it is. Now, is a an AI that is functioning to make sure that the ecosystem around humanity works, that everything, uh, you know, all the animals and humans are fed, that everyone's in good health, all these mm -hmm. things, if that's its primary function and goal, is it going to look at the capitalist system and say, that works? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it will. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, that's what I took from, from Alpha Go and Alpha Zero as well. It's like the fact that that thing was doing moves which people perceived as plain wrong. Yeah. Like, it, it, put, it did a move because... It, you know, it can see something that we can't and it looks arbitrary to us. And it's like, well, it's clearly malfunctioning, but really it has just seen it in a completely different way. And therefore AI has the potential to completely shift all our like redundant systems and things. And I mean, like that in itself is, is kind of insane. But it also has the, the capability to just compute so much more data. I mean, when you think mm -hmm. about big data and you think how much storage you could put in there, if you put every single human on a project and said, right, you're focused on this specific aspect, you're focused on this specific aspect, you still could never get them to, to go through data and to sort mm -hmm. out data in, a, in the same way that you could get a machine to take all the data and just digest it, go through it and go, this is the solution. And we can't see all the nuances of all the problems. We can think big picture about societal reform, economic reform, mm -hmm. but we, we can't see all the nuances. Whereas a machine can take in can everything, everything and actually make both a big picture, but also a smaller scale. You know, you can have mm -hmm. AI working in small communities, fixing small communities and you can mm -hmm. have an ai focused on you know the larger world focusing on yeah. everything um you know the distribution of resources whereas 
we we just cannot seem to do that on a human level. No. I mean, because we're always focused on personality. That's what we yeah. we trust that person. We don't trust that yeah, person. Exactly. You know what I mean? And yeah. it, it's it's odd how you you almost. And I guess that's why people get so you know. Oh, we we just wait for the AI to fix it. I don't know if that's necessarily the the answer, but I don't know. It could, you know, it could well be artificial overlords. <laughs> yeah, I mean, would you vote for it? <laughs> <laughs> Give me that UBI, think, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not coming, mate. <laughs> yeah, so the reason people are scared of it, obviously, is you've touched on it earlier, but people are scared that I'm a driver. When driverless cars come in, I won't have a job. And I think we, as a as a people need to say, okay, well, we need to make jobs for the people that are losing jobs, but also, Mm -hmm. you know, how do we reward someone who's already gone through all the training to, to become something. And then that job's not, they've not lost the job from, you know, lack of trying. They've just, it's just been taken away from them, but Mm -hmm. there has been three industrial revolutions that we have gone through as humans. And at every single point, more jobs came out you know like there is when when huge industry changes come there is jobs now not everyone's going to be able to retrain you know i mean and become a computer engineer but there is options for that yeah there are like you say like if the pattern persists then yeah i I mean (laughs) there should be i i don't know if i have this i don't know if this is me maybe dreaming a little bit and being, oh, that would be nice. But I have this this weird feeling that if AI came in and said, right, and I know you're thinking more about universal basic income, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking more from a from a AI comes in and says, right, you're all housed, you're all fed, you're all healthy. Um, pursue what is meaningful to all of you. So you go and choose your own thing that you want to go and do. And also mm. go and be human without the stress of being productive because the AI can be productive for us. Mm-hmm. So then we are free to be either productive or unproductive. But you look at a chimp and it's not worried about the stock market. That's the thing. But that's a, we like we would essentially be the chimps. Human. In that we can scenario. go be human again. Yeah, I mean, we are yeah. chimps compared to an AI. But- why would a super intelligent AI say, pre- presuming that that's what would be dis- making those kind of decisions? Why, why would it care that we would get that? Because then that's when you're into the like the value alignment problem, kind of. Yeah. Why? Wh- how do you an- how do you an- align a super intelligent um, AI with like with the values of a human? Okay, so with that, I think, so you're talking about the paperclip problem where if you said to a, an AI, we want paperclips, and then it turned everything on the planet into paperclips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you're also going along the lines of, I remember Elon Musk said before about um, the AI is building a road and we're just an anthill in the middle of it. An anthill um, in the, exactly. Wouldn't, like you don't, wouldn't, it, you're not evil, you don't care, like you don't, you, you don't want to harm the ants, it's just they're in, they're in the way, they're insignificant to you yeah i i think that all comes down to the regulation thing but i also think if you if you made an ai now i don't know what a computer is going to find beauty in but it's going to be an intelligence i think that's Mm -hmm. what we forget sometimes is it is going to be intelligent to the point where it will understand human life but it will also understand animal life It'll also understand plant life, mm-hmm. an ecosystem life. It won't just be worried about keeping humans happy and making us go, well, we want to go to Mars, so send us to Mars. Yeah. But <laughs> what it can potentially do is say, we have a lot of humans, we have a lot of bees, we, we want a, an ecosystem that works. It will probably be greener in its thinking than we are um, oh, and we'll probably so, yeah. solve a lot and go, okay, so we want this population of lions here 
Mm. You know what I mean? And it will, I think you shouldn't worry about it having not having the same values as humans because maybe it not having the same value of, as humans is what it's will make precisely it. precisely what we need, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're very human-centric because we are human, whereas an AI could come in and say, actually, we need to look at the globe. This is Earth. Mm. You are a species on Earth along with the other four quintillion species on Earth. And yeah. I, as a super intelligence, will fix it for all of you, and you will have a better chance. And then yeah, it can no also defend us from it kind of, from <laughs> from asteroids. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> I was waiting, but I was like, "What's it going to be? Space snakes?" No, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, it depends on how far in the future that you're really looking at, really, doesn't it? Because I mean, because if if it gets to the point where it's understanding abstract concepts uh, and then, almost, you know, if, if it has a concept of, of self, then, you know, it could potentially, I don't know. You, you have no idea. It's all hypothetical, but like you, it, it, it could potentially see itself as superior and then actually be considered evil to us. Yeah. I mean, it will have, it will have the value system. I mean, it's, it's being built at the moment at least, the way they are building machine brains is similar to the human brain. Mm. Um, if they, you know, so it's it's being built, now that's not necessarily the best thing, <laughs> but it's it should. <laughs> exactly, that's what I mean. It's kind of like, yeah. if it I, I would that exactly. Would, but I would assume that it would have some level of... Um, goodness and bad <laughs> like everything yeah yeah you know yeah we we totally. aren't purely good beings and not nothing is we we do things maybe that could be perceived as good when we're when we're grouped together um yeah i don't think i don't think groups of people ever want to on a large scale be evil this is what I've always said. Nobody yeah. is to themselves the bad guy. It's just mm. different perspectives. Yeah. But yeah. But we I could mean, end I up like with the... a serial killer AI. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I personally, I like the sound of like Elon Musk kind of achieving like a symbiotic relationship with our intelligence, artificial mm. intelligence. Um, that's through, his um, through something like Neuralink. That's his defense mechanism. That? Yeah, that's I mean, his defense mechanism. Yeah, yeah, that's his logic is it, of it, isn't it? It's, if we're if we're attached to it, if we're symbiotically, you know, meshed in <laughs> with AI, if it can't leave yeah. our body, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, um, yeah, <laughs> but I'm but interested actually cool. to hear. I'm interested to see what, hear what you think about Neuralink. What like what do you see as as a good thing or what do you think would hold hold it back? I've always wanted to be a cyborg, Ben. You should know this. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, Genius. though. Like, I do think that that is kind of the next stage. It's the it's the basis for the next stage of human evolution is integration with something like Neuralink. I'm not saying Neuralink is it. And I know that that's maybe like a, maybe a controversial opinion. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't really keen on the idea of basically uploading all your, cause you know, people were kind of uh, worried about like their data privacy and things right now anyway. And that is like complete total invasion of privacy. Like then you are part of a system and there is no escaping it but the thing is i don't i i kind of think that we are anyway and we have been for a long time and denying that is just is kind of i don't know it's it's like ignorance almost but then i see the benefits on the small day-to-day -day kind of basis of being that connected it's funny this i'm such a hypocrite because i'm not even on social media and i'm like <laughs> but then there's me saying yeah plug my brain into the cloud go for it <laughs> But seriously, yeah. like I think, and I mean the fact that like just the health benefits and being able to being able to fix 
neurological malfunctions by essentially having like a middleman between the nervous system and the brain is insane. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, if you can give me some sick Terminator HUD while doing that, like, and I can see infrared, which you like, they can do, like, they can tap into your optic nerve and they can, they can, you know, if they had an, if they had an infrared sensor in the Neuralink, they could then project that infrared image to your brain and you could see mm. an infrared. And I feel like the, the boundaries of, of what humans can do will be extended so much by something like that. I'm I'm down for it. I think it's cool. Elon Musk, if you're listening to this, you can plug a neural link into my head. Please do. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to call him Elon because I think we'd be friends. Um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're past that stage. <laughs> <laughs> I uh yeah so I I generally agree with you there. I will I will play devil's advocate a bit. Um but for the most part I I see all the fun in it, you know? Yeah. Um yeah. I think there is an element of obviously it's taking you're saying we'll get rid of the phone. It's too slow because our fingers are too slow. We'll just use yeah. our brain. You'll have rapid fire access to internet. You can search crack crack you have the information readily available um that's it increase the bandwidth the yeah the increase the bandwidth incredible but the problem i i always get this when I, it just reminds me of the matrix where i'm like that machine is attached to me if it has full control of my nervous system and full control of all the chemical reactions going on in my brain so if it uh -huh. wants to show me i'm going to work in the morning <laughs> and do something completely different with my body. I see where you're going. <laughs> it can yeah. it can feed information into my ears. It can feed information to my eyes. It can show it can it knows the chemicals that it have, needs to be released yeah. for me to trigger certain memories or impulses or feelings. Mm -hmm. It has it full control be a of barrier me. between you and reality. Yes, yeah. that is my issue with it. Is if mm -hmm. we are then going into full AI and it's going, mm, I want. Uh, 400,000 humans to work in the midday sun digging holes for some reason. Yeah. But it doesn't want to tell me that's what I'm doing. And actually it wants to tell me that I'm an investment banker now. And I'm there every morning believing in my head. And for all intents and purposes, it's actually happening to me. Yeah. I'm just living yeah. in a simulation inside my own brain. And that's the one thing that I get a little bit quirky with, with the Neuralink thing where I'm like, if AI is separated from us, we can mm -hmm. observe with our own minds what's going on. Mm -hmm. And even if things go to shit with it, we can go, well, that was a fucking bad idea, wasn't it? But <laughs> yeah, at we least shouldn't have done that. Not... <laughs> at least yeah, you know. but at least yeah. then we can be you actually in know Terminator, the like you were situation. mentioning earlier. <laughs> yeah. We can at least be John Connor. <laughs> Whereas if it's in our heads, we are no longer John Connor, we no we're idea. Neo from The Matrix. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, to, to be honest, who's to say, who's to say this hasn't already happened? <laughs> I mean, let's not go into simulation theory. We'll save that for another video. Um, yeah. <laughs> very totally. interesting. Also, like, freaky as hell. Definitely pondered but, on that way too long at some point. Me life. too. Many a, many a <laughs> sleepless night, yeah. But I mean, yeah, how could, like, it, 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 I don't know. The, the, ability, the, the abilities that it would give you, I think are are amazing, but yeah, yeah, that is a very good point. But then imagine just being able to imagine having an advanced version of the of the Alpha Zero in your head that just allows you to like 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 in the Matrix, you know, yeah, like with near like to go back to what you said, but obviously running over the thousands and thousands of games against itself to then I learn just... something completely. It's like, you know, you could do that with, I mean, <laughs> it probably wouldn't work quite, quite so well in the, in the Matrix, you imagine <laughs> Neo there. Like, yeah. I can play Go. <laughs> 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 wouldn't quite have the same effect. Not quite as cool as I know Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> that would be sick still. And to, be honest, <laughs> to be honest, like I think that, like after after watching that documentary of Al Alpha Alpha Go, like that's that game does seem cool. You know, I would I would happily learn that game. <laughs>
<laughs> but that yeah, Kung Fu first. That made me so sad, though, for that dude. It was emotional. It oh, was emotional. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. But I'm so glad he got that one victory in there. I mean, yeah. even though the, the game was over, like, you know, the match was over, like, that, that was still it was a glorious moment. It was a bit of a tearjerker for me, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I found that, yeah, I found that, especially... <laughs> With him, where, where you could see he was upset. I know we've gone way back 40 minutes ago in the topics. And I know, going, I know. Wait, what are we talking about now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is a documentary. If anyone wants to check it out on Google's DeepMind AlphaGo playing Lisa Doll. And it is definitely worth mm. a watch. I think you'd agree with me on it's that, It's good. Super we, good. I, yeah. I watched it years ago now, but I remember just being like, wow. Yeah. That guy impressed me regardless of the AI beating him. Oh my an god! Incredible, totally. An incredible guy, you know. Totally, um, and it's even to the point where you know that you've got the people who who have built the uh, who built AlphaGo, and mm. they are there, and it's like I can't celebrate victory against this man. Like, yeah. like that they says something win. about him. They want yeah. him to win, and they've designed this this machine to beat humans, but they're still rooting for the human at the end of the day and it's like a yeah. bittersweet victory which is really nice yeah definitely recommend that to anybody watching but jumping back to the um neural link when when you were saying about imagine having alpha go in your head obviously that's a very specific intelligence i think realistically we would rather have if we were having anything implanted in us as much as everyone would be like no nah, we want the best possible Version of, I think we would want a stupid AI in our head. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You don't want one that can fix your no, totally. feelings. Yeah. You don't want one that's going to release more dopamine. That's no. that's for you to fix as a person, as yeah. a human. I feel sad. Yeah, you don't I want to feel sad. everything to that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, you're right. Sometimes you're going to a funeral. You don't want your AI in your head to release dopamine and make you smile. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, exactly. I think I think emotions are something that should be left untouched by. Yeah, you know, humans should be free to feel human emotions. If we have anything that's in our head, it should just be there, essentially like a phone, yeah. giving you access to, you know, and tools to do things from your own thought processes. Exactly. Not yeah. sat there playing Not around actually. with your back and fixing that. Acting you know. as literally, yeah, affecting yeah. your moral decisions and things. I mean, one yeah. little voice in my head is already enough. I don't need some stupid <laughs> AI in there. <laughs> I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say eight little voices in my head is enough. <laughs> yeah. Quiet, quiet. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh. it's a funny one though, isn't it? Because at what point do you stop becoming human? Um, and I would say you stop becoming human when you can't regulate your own feelings. Um, yeah, agreed. You, you know, and also yeah. sometimes feeling bad is part of what makes you feel so good when you do feel good. It's kind of that. Oh yeah. As we'll exactly. as we'll get on to in Balance later that. episodes, Taoism. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yin yang, all those good things. Yeah. We'll get there. Spirituality. Yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> I it. Mean, that man. kind of so, ties into this, to be honest. Yeah. It does. It does. I mean, uh, everything ties into everything in the grand scheme of things, doesn't it? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think we'll probably, we'll wrap up sort of here. I think this has come to kind of a, a logical conclusion on our knowledge of these things. As you can see, mm. we are generalists, not specialists <laughs> in anything. We have <laughs> no idea what we're talking about. Yeah. And... <laughs> Thank you, guys. If anyone, I mean, my short term goal for this podcast slash video was for one person to make it to the end. So if you are that solitary person, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Um, but also, you know, these topics are things we'll probably revisit at some point when we have more knowledge or when new things come out about it. And we're going to be discussing all kinds of topics. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, it's just us kind of gassing our little two cents on things. And um, yeah. yeah, come back next time. You can leave a comment in the uh, below for <laughs> any video suggestions you have, any topics you want us to talk about. Obviously, leave a subscription. And like I said earlier, I'll leave some um, links in the bio for merchandise if you guys want to check any of that out. All right. Thank you, Bob. I'll chat to you next time. Cool. Thank nice you. to speak, bro.
I do. Sick.